as a woman, cold calling can feel uh, like so uncomfortable sometimes, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to cold call on businesses, the script, the tonality and what to do. Now, the biggest thing you have to understand when you're calling someone is that you cannot be like everybody else. So many people have a bad perception of salespeople in their mind. And so when you're calling and you sound like a salesperson, you're possibly going to get, um, I'm not interested. You're going to get hung up on, Oh, we already have somebody for that. Oh, um, yeah. Send me some information. Do you possibly get those type of objections? Because if you do, there is a possibility that you are causing a lot of that resistance, which you're causing people to go into fight or flight mode. So to first understand, we need to know how to trigger a receptivity response, which would be curiosity. I want you to learn how to trigger curiosity, curiosity as fast as humanly possible, right? Whenever I call and I sound like everybody else, hi, yeah, this is Kayla with XYZ company. Um, you know, uh, the reason why I'm calling you, sir, is because of this, 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 and they hang up or they're not interested. Or maybe you have this horrific uh, cold calling script. Hi, yeah, this is Kayla. Yes, you don't know me and I don't know you, but sir, if you just give me 60 seconds of your time, if you don't like me, I'll hang up on myself. Oh my gosh, like it doesn't work. Why? Because normally you're triggering a fight or flight response in the prospect's brain. And we want to remove that. We want to make sure that we're not doing that. So how do we trigger curiosity? Here's a perfect script on how to do this, right? We're going to go here. Hey, name of person. So like in this example, and there's so many examples for cold calling, but let's say that I am on LinkedIn sales navigator and I got someone's phone number off there and I'm calling this person directly. Okay. That's the situation. Hey, name. So let's say I'm talking to John. Hey, John. Hey, John, this is uh, just Kayla with XYZ company. Could you possibly help me out for a minute? Well, what am I doing? Okay. Now it looks like I'm making like weird facial expressions, right? And they can't even see me. Why the heck am I doing that? Because I'm trying to trigger a type of tonality to come from my voice. And when I use body language, when I use facial expressions, my tonality changes. Now I'm doing several things here. So I want to break this down for you. The first thing I'm saying is that this is just Kayla. Now I know that sounds maybe weird, to you if you're like why would you say that that doesn't make any sense but it's perfect because it's a pattern interrupt right this is just kayla almost like i'm saying this is just somebody that you know when i use the word just it allows you to act like there's familiarity here this is just like your auntie kk this is just kayla with xyz i need to be really quick about this right we are with this company and blah, blah blah no 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 this is you know just kayla with seventh level this is just kayla with XYZ insurance. This is just Kayla with this accounting, whatever. Super sweet, simple. Could you possibly, could and possibly are neutral uh, wordings. It's neutral language, pardon me. It's neutral language. So I'm trying to ask, could you possibly, and I'm acting confused, help me out for a moment. Now notice that my tonality went down. Could you possibly help me out for a minute is not going to land very well. We want to remove the th enthusiasm, so slow down and really just like drop into confused and I need help. Now, why am I asking for help? Because human behavior wants to help people in need, especially when they're putting you on the spot. Imagine someone calls you and they're like, hey, um, and they say your name. Could you possibly help me out for a minute? What did I do? I triggered curiosity. Like what the heck is all this about? Right? So there's so many different ways that this person could answer, but could you possibly help me out for a minute? Normally leads to yeah, like, yes, what's up? Or who are you? Or how can I help? You know, that kind of thing. So what are we doing with this? We're triggering curiosity, right? And from this, they're going to answer. They want to help out. So could you possibly help me out for a minute? They're going to say what? Yes. Or how could I help? Or 
who is this, right? They're going to go straight into opening up dialogue with you and having a conversation, which is what we're wanting. So we go straight into, well, I'm not quite sure if you're the right person I should be talking to. Now notice that I'm sounding confused. Okay. I'm doing this on purpose, right? Right. I'm still like someone that needs their help. I'm trying to make sure that I'm being respectful of their time, trying to make sure that I'm talking to the right person. Well, I'm not quite sure uh, if you're the right person I should be talking to, but I call to see who would be responsible. Now, depending on if you're calling like an SMB company or enterprise, your answer is going to be different. I'm trying to, I call to see who would be responsible in your company for, or I called to see who would be responsible in your department for. The reason why I'm asking the word responsible is because the person that's on the phone, tendency is for them to take responsibility of, yes, I'm in charge. Typically is what we see. I, I called to see who would be responsible in your company for looking at like any possible hidden gaps in your blank that could be causing you guys to, and some type of consequence here. So let's do this. Well, I'm not quite sure if you're the right person I should be talking to, but I called to see who would be um, responsible in your company for looking at like any possible hidden gaps in your accounting department that could be causing you guys to overpay in taxes. Um, who should I be talking to about that? See what I did here, right? First thing is that I'm not being like a pushy salesperson, right? First of all, when you are a pushy salesperson, especially for ladies, it feels super disingenuous and very, very inauthentic. I don't want to do that. What I want to do here is act confused and I want to make sure that I'm getting to the right person because I want them to lower their guard. If I act irrational or if I'm straight to the point sometimes, what it could do is cause them to go into fight or flight mode and they put their walls up and then they're like, just send me some information. What I'm doing here is I'm getting them to naturally lower their guard by disarming them. And I'm making them realize that there's a consequence, there's a pain point here that they should be looking at, right? So by doing this, we have, um, we have them realize that, okay, there might be something here that might be um, legitimate for us to have a conversation, okay? Now this question could be responded to in multiple different ways, right? They could say, oh yeah, no, that's gonna be Linda in this department. Or they could say, oh, that's me. Or they could say, oh yeah, that's me. Um, who are you again? Right? Let's just pretend for this scenario that we are going to go for, yeah, that's me. How can I help? Right? So let's just say that they said that. If we go over every single example of how they could be responding to you, we might be here for an hour and a half. And uh, I definitely don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. You need to go make some sales. So let's go to, if they said, yeah, that's me. How can I help? <clears throat> oh, okay. And um, just so you know, John, I'm not quite sure that we can even help you yet. I, I'd have to understand, you know, more about X, Y, Z. And I would say, you know, the results that you're getting from that just to see if we can even help because you might be better off staying with who you already have. For example, who do you guys use for, and then you go into your sh first NAPQ situation question where you first start understanding their situation. Now, what the heck did I do here? And why would I say, well, you might be better off staying with who you already have. Why would you say that, Kayla? Because I, as, as a woman, right, I need you to think about this sales game almost like dating life, okay? We want, somebody that's not like fully obsessed with us, right? <laughs> so when we think about when we're talking to somebody and we're seeing if we could possibly help and we tell them like, oh, we're not needy. Well, maybe you're better off staying with who you already have. It automatically lowers the guard. It automatically makes them more interested, more curious, more open to what you're saying. 
if you keep just bad talking, you know, your competition and you act like, you know, you're the best thing ever, it feels disingenuous. It feels inauthentic. It feels like every other salesperson trying to say that they're the best. So what we're trying to do is flip the script here and say like, hey, you might be better off staying with who you already have so that they feel like they're disarmed. They feel like they can open up. They feel like there can be a safe place for them to be open, to listen to what you have to say. Let's go over that again and listen to my tonality here. Listen to my pausing. It's very, very important. I can't just say this. Oh, okay. And yeah, you know, just so you know, I'm really not quite sure that we can even help, right? I can't go through that. And I know that's hard, especially if you're a fast talker like me, slowing down in this can be very, very difficult, but it's all about self-control. And if you really want to be able to help support this company, be able to make changes, and you want to help somebody, you have to learn how to control it yourself. Oh, okay, right? We just responded from here. Who should I be um, talking to about that? They said in this scenario, oh, that's me. How can I help? Oh, um, okay, John, and just so you know, I'm not quite sure that we can even help you yet. Uh, I'd, I have to understand more about X, Y, Z. And I would say the results that you're really getting from that just to see if we can even help because you might be better off staying with who you already have. Um, for example, who do you guys use for? And then again, going into your first NAPQ situation question. Now, if you're asking yourself, Kayla's saying so many ums and ahs and oohs and right now, and if you've been to Toastmasters like me and you're like, oh, you're not supposed to do that. I'm doing this on purpose here. And, and I will tell you why. Whenever I'm in a sales call, I want the person to absolutely understand that I'm a knowledgeable expert. But at the beginning of a call, especially when I don't know who this person is, I need to seem confused so that they are more curious as to what I'm doing. I also need it to seem like I'm thinking. I'm thinking about what to say versus being a scripted robot just reading off my questions. If I put some pauses in there and I'm like, well, you know, and, and just so you know, I'm not quite sure we can even help you yet. Uh, I'd have to understand, you know, a little bit more about when I'm doing that, it's making them feel like I'm thinking. And so many times we're so used to the scripts and everything else that we just get lost in this robot land where we're just consistently reading off scripts and the prospect feels that it feels very disingenuous. It feels inauthentic and we don't want that. We want them to feel like we're really thinking about what we're asking them because we care enough to take initiative. If you um, have a favorite actress or an actor that you love watching in movies, everything that they're doing is scripted, but it doesn't feel like that right because they are fully living in that moment and i would never want you to sell anything that you don't believe in or you're not behind because i want you to remain in your integrity but at the same time when you're learning a script it's really really important that you really fully embody it so that the person across from you doesn't feel like you're just reading from a paper they need to feel like you actually genuinely care about them the business or whatever you're working for whatever you're working towards so that they feel like you're on their side. Sales is supposed to feel collaborative. It's not supposed to be you trying to shove your solution down this person's throat and hopefully, you know, they buy. Um, I don't know if you go through this, but I used to call 220 calls a day. I would have people hang up on me, screaming at me, tell me F you, hang up on me. Sometimes like I would have somebody hang up and then I would just like send them a little video of myself real fast. I'm like, hey, I think we got disconnected. So hopefully that they would recall me back and we can have another conversation. I try to get really creative there. <sighs> I felt exhausted. At the end of every single day, I was so frustrated. At the beginning of every single day, I would hope and pray that something that I would do hopefully would let me talk to somebody that day and they wouldn't hang up on me and that we would actually close a deal. And my life felt like an ever ending prison cell every single time I went to work, but I did it because I was a single mom and I need to take care of my kid. And I don't want you to feel like that. When you know what to do and you can learn how to lower someone's guard and they feel like you actually care and we're having a legitimate conversation, 
you're not going to have so many objections. You're going to have more quality conversations. It won't be a numbers game. It will be a quality game. So I hope that this supports you. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get every training here. And I will see you very soon.